morning everybody I'm uh, gonna take you along with me today and uh, I've had a number of you keep telling me that this is the style of video you really like to see so <laughs> I'll keep making them if you guys keep enjoying them and liking what you're seeing so uh, get to park the truck just a few houses down from where I live and uh, it's really convenient because I can just walk out of the house, go down the end of the block, fire up the truck, and off we go. So that certainly is nice for me. Uh, at least in the summertime, I can do that. And we got a beautiful day. It should be sunny and clear for most of the day. Might, might be some clouds rolling in later, and maybe a chance of thunderstorms. It's midsummer, but. Washed the truck last night, so not looking too bad. I didn't wash the trailer, but I did wash the truck. And uh, yeah, I love rolling clean whenever I can. <laughs> so, good morning, beautiful. You gotta talk to him just like a horse, right? At least I do. I always have. All right, so I won't bore you with my pre trip and uh, all the things that go into how I start my day out. I've, I've brought you guys along on that and every driver kind of has his own routine of going through checking lights and tires and fluids and all that stuff. So anyway, once we get rolling here, uh, we'll stop and get some fuel and I'll kind of run you through what's gonna happen today and uh, we'll get some miles on. So yeah, let's get to it. see some cool trucks here not always we are a little bit later in the morning than I like to be but usually there's somebody cool sitting here Clean my windshield. I hate bugs and water spots. Just drive me crazy.
right, so let me give you a quick rundown of how this day is going to play out. So right now we are southbound with an empty trailer. We're headed to Northwood, Iowa. We're going to grab a load of CA50. That's an aggregate that's used in cement. And we're going to take that to Mankato, Minnesota to a semstone location. We'll dump that and then go north a little ways to St. Peter, Minnesota, where we're going to get a load of sand. And we'll take that up to a suburb of the Twin Cities on the north side called Champlin. We'll dump that at a high school, uh, kind of a construction site there. And then check in with dispatch. They're going to tell us to go from there back south to Shakopee, Minnesota. We're going to get a load of ball field lime. That's the kind of lime that's used on softball and baseball diamonds. Kind of that red uh, colored chalky lime and we're going to take that down to Rochester, Minnesota and dump that on a baseball field at a school down there. So that's how the day is going to shake out. There we go. So half inch limestone rock. It's going to be uh, going to Semstone in Mankato. So tarp this baby up. I'll probably charge up the camera because likes to eat batteries up as we're doing time lapses and stuff like that and uh so i'll see you in Kato. here we go i say here we go too much every time in Mankato here. Now I probably made a mistake of saying that the rock that's in the trailer is half inch and uh, it's actually CA50 which is three quarter inch um, but to the same location we'll also bring inch and a half, pea rock, washed sand from a couple different pits. So yeah we're, we're in these semstone locations all across southern Minnesota quite often. Uh, and we'll bring them a lot of the different materials that, that they need. Um, sometimes they'll set up a portable plant and those can be a little bit more tricky to deal with. Kind of tight spaces and not always ideal dumping sites, you know, when it's on soft ground and stuff like that. But I love coming into locations like this because they're permanent and we can be on nice flat solid ground and so we just communicate with hand signals with this loader and yeah looks like it's not a very busy spot if i went to my right that's where they have a conveyor for dumping the sand but we're going to be dumping straight ahead in that gray bin that you can see sometimes we bring in that pink rock that's in the center bin that comes from New Ulm, Minnesota. If you've ridden with me some, some of my other videos, we're delivering that rock. Or the wash sand there, pea rock. Just, they have lots of different grades of material that they bring in here. So. Alright, let's get back to this spot here. the larger and more busy semstone locations that we come to. There's some smaller ones. The semstone's one of those bigger companies that buys up a lot of smaller mom and pop locations. All right, so we're backed in, set the trailer brakes, lower the trailer airbags, open the tailgate, send the trailer up. RPMs a little bit just to speed things up otherwise it takes like twice as long to get the trailer up in the air but I try
try my best to keep the truck and the trailer as straight as possible. It's not quite as critical when we're on pavement like this, but it's a lot more likely to tip the trailer over if you're not, not straight on. I'm actually working on a video on how to operate a frameless end dump safely 101, so. Working on writing it and filming it, things like that right now. Not that I'm an authority, but I've been doing this for uh, seven years now. So my goal is to make the kind of video that I wish was out there when I first started driving. Frameless end up. All right, pull ahead, away from the pile. Let the tailgate slam. And I'm just using the Johnny bar to hold the trailer and let the truck back down now. Let the trailer down, let the truck roll ahead. So many times we do this without even really thinking about it, it just becomes muscle memory. And especially when you're on good surface like this. All right. We pull ahead and roll gently as the trailer comes down. There's a mailbox over here by the entrance gate. i just leave my slip in there and we'll move on to our next load for the day. We'll get loaded with that sand material I was telling you about earlier. And uh, yeah, I don't remember much about that place, so we'll kind of figure it out. I saw the other two guys are behind me, so I'm, I'm kind of the guinea pig today. Got to figure things out myself. <laughs> Leave my slip here. Now's a good chance to just make sure that tailgate is latched properly. We'll open up the tarp because we don't have to go real far to get to our next location to get loaded. And uh, I'll make sure that if I need to sweep out, I'll do that now. Usually there's just a couple chromes here and there, not much, but when we're switching to a different product, it's really important that we don't have any contamination. So sweeping out's the safe way to go. See Brandon caught up with us. So we're off to Le Sewer. Um, it's pretty close to a little town. We're actually gonna go through the town of St. Peter, Minnesota. And that is a historic little town with a really, really neat downtown area. Lots of uh, Casota stone, I believe is what they call that kind of rock. A lot of the buildings are made from it. It's awesome. So I'll do some time lapse and we'll try and shoot some cool video of downtown St. Peter as we roll by. We're on our way to Uniman to get some.
right, so we made it here to Unimin. Uh, quite a bit of truck traffic on this driveway, but it doesn't look like there's long lines, which is good news. Um, I've been in here before where you have pneumatic trailers and there's hoppers, there's end dumps, and, and uh, so I don't know a whole lot about this company other than the fact that we're in the Minnesota River Valley and there's a lot of rail cars both directions and there's a lot of truck traffic so I think I think that they dredge the sand out of the river valley area it gets washed and filtered and and things like that and then it goes to different places shipped out on rail and shipped out on truck I think but maybe product comes in as well I'm not really sure so I'm not going to pretend to be the expert on that so I'm going to jot a couple things down on my log book here and then uh, again, because it's been so long since I've been here and only the one time, I'm going to look in my secret weapon that I like to use. I'll show it to you here. <laughs> this thing is really, really ratty and I need to rewrite it out. But one of the tips that I would recommend for newer guys starting out is write down your different locations that you go to and what channel that they use for the CB radio. And I know that I've written it down in here before what channel they speak on. Um, and I'm going to have to probably talk to the guy directly face to face anyway, just to get reminded of what the rules are around here. I think we had to wear hard hats last time. I don't know, but I do remember getting loaded overhead. So be interesting. I don't know. Figure it out as we go. But that's, that's one of my secret tips. I'm going to get a new folder and a new sheet of paper and... I might type it out next time, I don't know, but it comes in real handy to just scribble something down if you're going to someplace new for the first time, and obviously we go to hundreds and hundreds of different locations, and so um, another thing that I like to do, I like to write down the, the scale lady's name and maybe the loader guy's name, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a scale guy, maybe it's a loader lady too, that, that happens as well, but if you remember people's names, that goes a long way, so... Uh, I'm terrible with names just if I meet you face to face uh, I, it has to be a few times before I can remember names and faces very well it's just a thing about me so anyway uh, let's get set up and we'll go get loaded I'm not really sure where I'm gonna mount the camera I might put it in the trailer so you can watch the loading process I don't really know figuring it out as I go All right, that sign says we have to wear hard hats, so, yeah. Remember there being tight corners and railroad tracks involved. <laughs> I could call in on channel 14, I guess, and find out. I remember crossing tracks. You want to just ask him yeah. if he wants our info? Or... the ignition on so we can hear the radio. Turn the volume up. 
and maybe just grab a rag and clean something. Hopefully something happens soon. I think Brandon's right. I remember kind of loading across railroad tracks and then having to back up and get on the scale and I don't know. We'll figure it out. Rock and I'm swept out and I will take 22 tons as well. Alright, gotcha, Donald, thanks. Okay, so they got our information down. Uh, we told them exactly who we were, what our information was, our PO number, all that kind of stuff. And so we're just waiting our turn to, to get loaded here. Whenever he's ready for us, he's going to call us and we'll pull up underneath the chute. So, yeah, just caught the tail end of that conversation. Since Brandon and I are doing the same product, same load today, same PO number, it's going to the same high school up in uh, I think it's Champlin Minnesota so we're actually going to be driving through the Twin Cities metro area up to the uh, north end Good to go? Thanks. Guess we're good to go. Guys won't be far behind us then. Let's rock and roll. Spot. 
This stuff is really cool because, I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, the, the beads of silica, the very, very small, fine granules of sand in this thing are very round, and so it flows super nice. It's really, really soft and silky feeling as far as sand goes. You know, if you look at salt really close up, it's super granular and sharp and jagged edges. This stuff is not. It's really, really smooth and fine. So, what is it gonna be used for at the school? I don't know for sure, but I have two guesses. So. Again, if, if you know and you can put it in the comments, great. The, that way other people can see it and learn about it. But um, I'm thinking that these landscape guys are going to be either using this sand for leveling out a surface before they put on um, maybe some sod or something like that and they need good drainage. The other guess that I have is that maybe this is being used in a track and field setup like a pit where people are landing and need a soft landing area for like long jump or something like that. Again, I truly don't know. Uh, I think we're gonna be dumping it in a like paved parking lot. So, yeah, let's uh, let's tarp up. I'm gonna call the customer and let them know that I'm on the way, and uh, see you on the other end. Here we go. I say here we go too much. two trucks behind me here so turn in where those cars are at see if we can figure something out it's a nice wide driveway but I still want to swing kind of wide not sure if this is right guys but we'll give it a shot here pressure looks like something's happening over here
guy waving his arms up ahead here, so I'll head his way. He's in a gray long sleeve t shirt. Guys, I'm gonna jump out here for just a second, talk to this guy. Champlin, Minnesota, the, kind of the northern area of, of the suburbs, and spun around, came back south, and we're now in Shakopee, Minnesota. We're at a little pit that I've been excited to show you guys on the channel for a little while. It's called Brian Rock. It's on 169 in Shakopee, and uh, cool little place here. You can kind of see from the driveway that it's sort of a orange limestone kind of deal, and so uh, we're gonna get loaded with a product called ball field line and it's one of those specialties that we do for Holicky Brothers uh, This stuff is known all over the world for being some of the best ball field line the kind of stuff you play baseball on that orange colored stuff That's what we're gonna get. We're gonna get a load of this take it down to Rochester, Minnesota And that's how we're gonna finish our day So I'm gonna open up the tarp here gonna sweep out quick because like always whenever we switch from one product to another Make sure you get a clean box. Uh, looks like conditions are kind of dusty, so I'm probably going to mount the camera up high uh, just so we don't get a whole lot of, you know, dust and stuff like that covering over the, the camera lens. Once in a while, the water truck's running around, and in that case, then it just kind of turns into a big sloppy mess because it's lime. But uh, Brandon's probably behind us, too. He's doing a, a load of the same thing. We have the same dispatch all day long. So sit tight here. Let's make a clean box and uh, strap the camera on, here we go. Here we go, I said it again, here we go. Man alive. <laughs> I, got, I gotta stop saying here we go. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Cool place, I'm hoping you can uh, get a sense, kind of a feel of this pit. Um, if I keep the microphone clipped on my lapel here, hopefully you can hear some of the radio chatter that's going on. Really, really cool people that work here. The the scale lady and the two guys in the loaders, they all seem to get along really well with each other. And then anytime I've come in here, <clears throat> they're always joking around and <clears throat> having fun. And so it makes for a really pretty cool vibe to this, uh, this particular quarry. There's Brandon, you can see. He, he kind of leapfrogged ahead of us. He's sweeping out. Hey, bud. I always, always end up seeing folks I know when I'm when I'm in here too. I don't I don't just mean Brandon. I mean other other people as well. <laughs> Getting a shot for the gram. <laughs> oh, Brandon's a good kid. You can watch some of his other videos. We we talk a little bit about his truck. I pinstriped on, on the truck he drives, number eight. I uh, pinstriped his race car. He's a good guy. Yeah, that's a beautiful Pete. How's it going? So yeah, this really distinctive orange color 
to this pit means that the lime coming out of the ground is going to stay that color. It doesn't get bleached out with the sun. Like I've seen other other baseball and softball fields that have lime on them that has been kind of colorized. You know, it might be naturally a little bit white or yellow lime. And, uh, and they'll add the reddish color to it. But uh, this stuff naturally comes out really orange. And uh, that's why I've heard, now that I, I could be wrong here, but I have heard stories that this particular ball field line coming from Shakopee, Minnesota, has actually made it onto ships that go all the way overseas, like to Europe and to Asia and places like that. So we're gonna spin around here. I almost always grab a new empty weight anytime I'm here, just to make sure we're really accurate. I don't know how long my empty weight's good for, because it's different at every quarry we go into, but this is one of them that I, I just lay it safe and get an accurate weight every single time. full tanks. There we go, green light. I prefer to be half tanks or, you know, something like that so I can get a little bit more product, a little bit bigger paycheck if you run on the lower end of your tanks, but you know what, you can't always do that. But yeah, there's some cool equipment around in the hills of this place too. It's been a functioning quarry for quite a while so you'll see some old rusty equipment tucked back in the weeds and stuff like that there's a GMC general like a five star general parked out here somewhere and see if we can spot it <clears throat> I stopped and took photos of that one time hi Brandon <laughs> I can spin the camera around because they got some pretty cool loader machines and cool loader guys here. So let's see what we can do. I have to stay inside the truck. It's always a good idea while you're sitting and waiting. Get your address lined up for your next delivery off the dispatch and put it in the GPS and get your phone ready to call the customer, you know, all the little things. Get caught up on your log book. I'll be shooting for 24 on the ball line, please. Copy that. Man, sometimes I wish I had like two or three cameras on this truck all at the same time because there's some really cool trucks parked back, kind of tucked behind little hills and stuff. Uh, we can't catch everything all at once. You make that camera go longer over there with the large frame? We did, yep added four feet to it so a little bit more tricky to get around now 
say uh, superstar or anything like that maybe rookie
I'd rather deal with dust than deal with mud. Because let me tell you what, this place will make a real mess of your truck on a rainy day. Oh boy. Chester, Minnesota for our next delivery and uh, got Brandon ahead of us you got directions from the customer where we're gonna be putting this but it looks like right there on the ball field so I'll probably jump out along with Brandon we'll scope out the dump site make sure we got enough room to get in there all that kind of stuff <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go by the other piles. <laughs> no, I don't care. So I think what I'm going to do is after Brandon dumps his near these other two, I'll put mine here and I'll I'll probably actually back in cuz we got plenty of room and space and less maneuvering that I have to do on the customer's grass. So that'll make sense to have Brandon go first. to be able to see how these are dumped also. And this really is an ideal surface if you're going to be on a on a surface. This is it. Nice and level and smooth and hard packed. Okay, you can see his latches are open. Suspension is dumped now. Suspension is dumped on the truck. I can hear it. He's raising the front of the trailer. It's picture perfect. And 
keeping a fairly safe distance back here. You don't want to be directly up against the tailgate. It's weird things happen. You also don't want to be directly next to the trailer, like on the side of it. And it helps so much that this product is dry. <laughs> there, it's flowing beautifully. Heck yeah. See all that weight is balancing on these two back tires. So he'll, he'll go up a little bit further. Now he's gonna set the tractor brakes. And he's gonna pull the trailer ahead. As it goes up the rest of the way, it's pulling the trailer away from the load. He's now at the very top. Now he's gonna drive truck and trailer ahead. Tailgate will slam. Boom, perfect. Absolutely picture perfect. The guys are professional. Yep, now he's gonna let his flaps clean off. Just like that, as, as the trailer comes down in the front, kicks it up in the back, he's gonna come back here, double check his latches, kick his flaps off. Love it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Picture perfect, man. Nice job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. I don't know if you caught what he said, but he's like, ah, it wasn't raining, so we don't have two tons stuck up in the front of the trailer. And he's absolutely right. Can't tell you the number of times we've had to jump in the trailer and shovel and scrape, put the trailer back up in the air again and try and get it all to clear out we've we've had to shovel for I'm not exaggerating close to an hour before just to get those things to clean out Cummins N14 power in that truck. We did a swap. It used to have a mechanical big cam Cummins in it. And uh, so if you want to see that episode, it's a good one. We built that engine ourselves and then installed it doing the swap. And so go check that out somewhere else on the channel here.
more safe. All right, another successful delivery. Take the ticket. If the customer's not around, stuff it in the pile, just like that. Boom, all right. Clear the latches, kick the flaps. We'll be good to go. Time to head for home. Good day. Good day. We got three good loads in. Still got fuel. We're in one piece. We'll uh, be ready to rock for tomorrow morning. That's for sure. We're not that far from home either, so. Little ways yet, but not bad. Well, man, it was fun to run together today. Thanks for your help. Yeah, thank you too. Have a nice night. We'll ride right you tomorrow. You got it, man. All right, so now that we're parked, I can take a few minutes and do kind of a post-trip walk around of the truck, open up the hood, just make sure we didn't have anything major happen today. And, and uh, I also like to take a few minutes at the end of every day and just sort of do a little bit of housekeeping, cleaning of some kind, you know, and it just depends on what the weather is and stuff like that. Sometimes it's getting some bugs off the, the windows or, you know, just wiping dust off or, whatever just a little bit just to help clear my head a little bit too it's a way for me to do a little bit of praying and unwinding and have some quiet prepare myself to uh, go back to the house and spend some time with my kids and my wife and, and stuff like that oh speaking of which I'm getting a call right now hang on so what was i saying uh so i i take a few minutes and and just grab a rag wipe some aluminum or, or some sort of metal or things like that and uh, kind of just clears my head a little bit prepares me to go home and and uh, uh, switch hats you know uh, leave work at work and switch over to husband and daddy mode things like that and uh, so everybody has their own way of unwinding but that's kind of what works for me um, kind of I, I don't know if I would say today was a typical day um, maybe a little bit on the light side which is nice um, you know, we got to put close to about 400 miles on today, nine and a half hours. Uh, we didn't stray all that far from home, uh, stayed fairly local, which is nice. I, I kind of like days like that. So, um, you know, not everything is always going to go according to plan either. Uh, had to sit and wait in line for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. And that's kind of a bummer. Uh, that doesn't happen to us all that often. So, uh, you know, ideally the day would have gone even quicker uh, had we not had to wait in line, but you know, it gives me a chance to catch up on some other things like cleaning and polishing and, and uh, a little bit of social media stuff and things like that. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of how today went. Uh, two different states, three different loads. And uh, again, my apologies for not giving you a closer look at that sand that we hauled earlier today. But um, that's, that's what, uh, that's what we do, especially during the summer months. There's a lot of aggregate and, and local work and things like that. Tomorrow, I'll be back to hauling some sand up in the Twin Cities metro area and then preloading some decorative rock from Wisconsin that goes down into Iowa. And uh, if you watch one of my previous uh, end dump diary uh, videos, it's going to be some of those same spots. So we, we have a, a rotation of locations that we deliver to quite often. And so... Um, be sure and check out some of those other episodes if you want to ride along. I'm making these episodes because you guys have reached out to me and said, hey, we really like doing this kind of stuff with your ride-alongs and you're explaining the different products and where you go and what you do and stuff like that. So if this is what you want to see, I'll just keep making more of them. So this is by request, and I thank each one of you for reaching out to me and sending me DMs on Instagram, things like that. I don't see the uh, comments 
here on YouTube, but I do appreciate the comments that people leave because that helps the algorithm push our videos out. And so thank you to everybody who's been supporting this channel. It's awesome to see how fast it grows. I also want to mention one other thing. We have merch now. Um, so many of you have been saying, hey, when can we get Peace and Grease flannel Philip t-shirts and, and hoodies and things like that. So we now have it available. Uh, it's at GoShineOn.com. And uh, that's where you can find t-shirts and hoodies with the flannel Philip wrench cross logo. It's got some pinstriping on it and some flannel. So a uh, really cool design that Josh Rowan came up with. And I'm thrilled to be able to offer it on Evan Steger's website. Uh, it's GoShineOn.com. I'll put the link in the description. And if we're able to, I'll make it somewhere here on the screen that you can click. So go check that out. And uh, while you're there at GoShineOn.com, why don't you pick up some Time to Shine polish because that's Evan's stuff and it's, it's the best I've ever used. So you can get uh, hooked up with all kinds of awesome stuff there and some other awesome merch that uh, the guys are, are selling there on the site. So anyway, again, enough commercials. Thank you again so much from the bottom of my heart, everybody. And uh, I'll just keep trying to show you what I do and I'm glad you're coming along with me. Peace and grease, everybody. <laughs>